So in this short clip, I'm going to show you how to create a ping pong game. So you basically have a bat and you move it around until the ball stops or you get score or whatever. So I'm just going to show you a simple game. Now, I'll just show you what we're going to be producing. So this is a simple uh, game. So if I just click the start here, we've got ball and then you bounce the ball from one wall to the next. Sometimes you'll get the ball and sometimes you won't. Now at the moment I haven't added all the extra bits on it, I'm just doing a simple bat and ball game. All right, so how do we do that? Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna start you from the beginning. So I'll go file new and we're gonna show you how this is done. So first of all, you've got a new project. Always remember to give your project a name. So I'm gonna give mine the name Pong, uh, oh sorry, Ping Pong, okay. Now, uh, by default, you end up with a cat. I do not want the cat, so we're gonna get rid of the cat. Cat is now gone. So I'm gonna need two things. I'm gonna need a bat, and I'm gonna need a ball. So I'm first of all gonna draw my own bat, so I'm gonna paint it. And it's very simple, I pick a color, and I'm gonna do a square, uh, click this one here, and I'm going to draw a bat. So I can move it a little bit, just to make it sure that it looks okay. Um, yeah, I think that's about right. There we go. So there is my nap bat. Now my bat is, as you can see, a little bit big. So what I'm going to do is reduce the size of it a bit. Maybe, uh, maybe about 40. Oh, <laughs> probably a little bit too big. Let's make it about 40. Maybe that's a bit too big. Let's make it about 20. Okay. So there's my bat and I can move it any round. Now, when you move your object around, you will see the coordinates at the bottom here. Now, remember the X and Y coordinates, always very, very important, the X and Y coordinates. But I'm, for the time being, again, if I did that 100, no, I don't want that. I'll go back to 20, 40, okay. So I've got my bat there, maybe about 30. Just wanna make sure I don't want a too big a bat, maybe about 20. That'll do. Okay, so I've got my position there. Now what I'm going to do is put it in a position where it starts. Now I also need a ball. So I'm going to create a ball. Now this time I'm not going to paint my own ball because there is actually one already. So I'll type in ball and you can sit on ball. Now notice the ball is a little bit too big. So again, I'm going to reduce it a little bit and we have a little tiny ball now. So now at the moment we've got the two objects but we've got no code. So what I want to do is put some code in. So what, this is the difficult bit, and I'll explain how we do it. So we click on the bat. Now what we want to do is when I press the left key, it's going to go left, and when I press the correct right key, it goes right. Now I know in the past we have done the when key pressed, but unfortunately we need to be faster than that. So we need to make it so as soon as we hit left and right, it needs to move and respond quite quickly, which that unfortunately that bit doesn't do. So we're going to do it slightly different, and I'll explain. We're going to use the when clicked, and we're going to say, as soon as I start, I want to start the bat at a particular position. So instead of, say, starting up there or down here or whatever, we want it to start in a good position. So I'm going to go motion and I'm going to say, set my X and Y position to 17 minus 155. OK, now, so when I start it, it starts there, as you can see, and that's the position. So 17 minus 1.4, which is slightly down on where that is there. So that will set me there. Now I'm gonna do this thing, which we've not done yet, it's called loops, and I'm gonna create a forever loop. Now a forever loop will have, so a forever loop will have the, um, code in it which will loop forever. That's what it says, a forever loop. So in that forever loop, I'm gonna use what we call if statements. So you can see that in the section here in the control, scroll down, if, and you'll find an if statement says, well, if this particular thing happens, then do this. And that's what we're gonna do. Now at the moment, we've got this little blank here because we haven't told it if what, what happens when we do something. So what we're gonna say, and this is the bit we're gonna say, Okay, I'm going to do a bit of sensing, and I'm going to say, if the key that I press is the left key, or the left arrow key, then I'm going to change my X, so that's the motion bit, my X by minus 10. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same for the next control. So I'm going to go, um, if my key is 
right, then I'm going to do the set to the difference. So instead of going left, minus 10, I'm going to go right. So if I then change my X by 10. Now, so this now will loop around forever, continually checking my left and my right arrow. So if I run it, you will find I can now move left and right. Look at that. And it's much, much quicker than I had before. So it's really, really fast. So now I'm going to stop uh, this. Now I want the ball to move. So the next thing we need to do is go on to the ball. Now the ball will move in directions and when it hits the wall it's going to bounce in the opposite direction. So what we need to do, we say okay, events, when I click or when I start the game, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the position of my ball and I'm going to turn it so that it faces in a certain direction. So I'm going to turn it in a random direction. At the moment that says turn 15 degrees. I don't want it to turn 15 degrees. I want it to turn in a particular random direction. So I'm going to say pick a random number between 0 and 360 degrees. Now you might remember in mass that 360 degrees means it's going to t do from the top of the s right round the full angle from the top of the circle all the way round. So it's going to pick a totally random direction. And then I'm going to use this random loop again. So go to control. We're going to go to the forever loop again, which is this one here. We drag it. And we are going to say, okay, what bit of code do I want to repeat forever? So I'm going to say, I'm going to move 10 steps forward and I'm going to use the if statement. I'm going to say, if I hit the edge, then bounce. So now if I run it, it will bounce. And if every time I run it or stop it, it will always move in a random direction, depending on when I do it. Now, the problem you may see at the moment, it goes through my bat, which that's no good. We don't want that. So we have to change the code. Now, I wonder if you can think out how we might do that. Well, what we need to do is ask ourselves, what happens if I hit the pad? What do I do? So we use again the if function. So we go to the control, we go to if, and we say, okay, if I need to sense, I need to say, okay, what do I need to do if I sense? I need to say, if I'm touching, the bat. Now notice it comes up sprite one. I haven't actually named my bat at the moment. So I need to go in there and name that bat. I forgot to do that. So I need to name it. I go back to my ball code and I say, well, if, you, if I'm touching the bat, what do you want me to do? Or actually I could call it, should I call it bat or paddle? Actually, I'll call it paddle. Okay. And I'll go back to my code, change that to paddle. Okay. If I'm doing my puddle, what do I want to do? Well, first of all, I want to make a noise so it makes it so you can hear what's happening. So I'm going to go to sounds. I'm going to click on my sounds. Uh, now I've already got it here. Pop. You, you might. If I delete that and add it again, so I'll go add. I'm going to find a pop sound, okay, or water drop sound. Actually, water drop. Here we go. I've got my water drop sound. I'm happy with that. So I go back. So that's now going to play my water drop sound. But I haven't played it yet, so I need to go play sound. So where's my sound? I'm going to start my sound water trap. So it will just start the sound. All right. Now, what I've got to do, this is another, when I hit the bat, not only do I need to play the sound, but I need to say the ball in the opposite direction to whence it came. How do I do that? Well, what I do is go into my motion and I say point in a direction. Now what direction we want to point it in. So I'll just show you this green bit. So we go to the green one. We do a bit of maths here. So I'll show, explain. We use the minus and we're going to go back to motion and we're going to go to direction at the bottom here and I'm going to put 180. Now I don't know, I'll give you a little moment to think what's happening there and that's quite tricky maths. So I'll explain. 180 degrees minus the direction I am going in. So imagine it as sort of a circle and you, what you're doing is saying whichever direction I'm going in, whatever degree, I'm going to 
change it into the opposite direction. So essentially that's what 180 degrees minus direction means. Don't worry about the maths of it at this stage. If you can, if you know why it's doing that, great. And if you want to find out more, I can explain it to you. But that just take it from me. So it's 180 minus direction. And then just to give it a bit of step, because obviously if I hit it and I don't move it, it's going to stay continually hit. So I have to move it a little bit to say like move away from the bat a bit. So move away. Once you've hit me, move one away. So you're not hitting me anymore. You're going away. All right. Now I'm going to run it and see what happens. So actually, I don't want it to go in that direction. I want a better random position that. So, oops, I missed it that time. Let's try and get it the next time around. So I'm going to quickly do that. Oi, and bounce. And you'll notice making a little little beep sound as it as it goes around. Beep, beep, beep. OK, so there you go. We have now created our first bat and ball game. Now, there are things that we can add to it and we might look at it this lesson or we might look at it next lesson, see how quick you go. So, for example, if I miss the ball, what happens? Do I lose points or scores? If I hit the bat, do I get extra points? Could I add another bat up here to so another player? So we're both hitting the ball and to see which one misses the ball first, loses. So we can have a look at those things, but just have a go at doing that. So remember, I did my paddle first. I added the code to my paddle. I then created my ball and then added my ball to the paddle. And if you don't, you don't necessarily have to use that ball. You can use another ball or any other code you like. Hopefully that will get you started. And I'll put a copy of the code into the team so that you can have a look at it there. Thank you very much. See you in the lesson.